where the conflicts take place and uh, help each other to learn about each other and what they believe and how they can get along. There's a lot of possibilities, I feel, for cooperation and development projects. Uh, I've always been enlightened by one out in the Kempt in the West where they were digging uh, wells and, and uh, providing pumps. And it was a church project, but the committee uh, very wisely brought on a couple of Muslims on the, onto the committee, and it just changed uh, the whole attitude between Christians and Muslims uh, and how they related, because Muslims were able to um, be part of the decision where the wells were, were dug. Um, Reformation without extremism. Uh, and I say this for both Muslims and Christians. Uh, yes, we need to reform uh, our churches and, and mosques, but uh, uh, we need to talk together how, how we can do that uh, in, in keeping extremism out. Dialogue and outreach, I put these two together. Uh, working together for looking for common ground, moving beyond that to uh, respect each other's differences, uh, recognizing both, and then emphasizing this matter of freedom of conscience that we do choose. In Ethiopia, uh, it is there. Uh, it's enshrined in the Constitution. People can change their religion. Uh, sometimes, in a particular locality, it is very, very difficult. And the family goes after a Muslim convert, uh, or an Orthodox family if, if, if a Christian uh, changes to Islam. Uh, uh, an Orthodox family may, may uh, disown their child. Uh, so this idea of freedom of conscience is, is, is there, but not always in practice, so we have to work. Uh, so, as I say, Ethiopia can can become a model to Africa and the rest of the world regarding constructive Christian Muslim relations, but it's going to take on a hard work. Okay, um, I, I think it was just half an hour. So we have uh, a few minutes then for some questions, and um, as I said, I hope my, uh, my brothers in, from Ethiopia can help me as we Take questions. Yeah, so as uh, Hitler has said, if we can uh, have, uh, we now have about uh, 10 minutes for questions or clarification. We will do sort of a major discussion on the group. Hopefully, this group meeting is the same way. So, if you have questions for clarification and of those from Ethiopia, you have a comment or two to make, please, you can do that now. When you spoke about reverse dimma, uh, is it at the, the level of the law of the country? Is there something in the law that is um, discriminating towards Muslims? Good question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just um, just wanted to, to to help clarify this. When when the Islamic sources talk about the necklace having uh, later on converted to um, to Islam. Would you, would you from from your research, see that one as um, a kind of Muslim traditional triumph, being trying to be triumphant? Or are you, are you uh, from your research, saying that uh, Negus, the Christian uh, king, really converted? Good. Another question? Yes. Yeah, uh, you told us uh, you know the uh, statistics talk about Muslims thirty four percent or forty five percent, but how many are Christians? We presume the rest are Christians. <laughs> 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 That's the 
Surya. <laughs> Good. Yes, David. Um, we hear reports about rapid church growth in Ethiopia, and I suppose some of that is simply shuffling back and forth between Orthodox and Protestant. But I hear that some of that growth is significant parts of that growth is also Muslims becoming believers in Christ, maybe moving the other way as well. Um, how does conversion growth in a setting like this affect the community relations? And how do the churches work at that? Last question? Yeah. Parvati. A comment, not a question. Uh, I noticed the, the difference between uh, Ethiopia and the examples we have before, like in, in Ghana and other uh, places of Christians when they are the majority and Muslims are the minority. And then uh, in Ethiopia we have uh, uh, almost equal or uh, mutual number of, of both. And, and when I will talk later about Egypt, uh, it will be the opposite. So, uh, and another thing that uh, you mentioned that the, the church in Ethiopia were there before, was there before the coming of Islam. And it's a very important uh, thing because uh, you don't uh, suffer from the thing we didn't make, we didn't establish as Africans uh, of the, the guilt of the Crusades and of uh, colonialism. We we didn't uh, crusade anybody, and we we are not uh, colonialists. So why do we keep this guilt in our churches and in, in our? Uh, it is not our problem, it's uh, the West. And the West is not going to evangelize anymore. So it's our duty in, uh, in Africa. <laughs> Good, it's over to you. Okay, um, just to clarify about this uh, reverse dhimma idea. Um, it was enshrined in the, uh, by the earth, those early kings af after the uh, Ahmed Ranya Jihad, uh, those early kings, those, those subsequent kings, um, officially opp oppressed the Muslims. Um, that was, there was a backlash at the end of the 19th century, officially. Um, the Edict of Baro Medu was, was reversed by, by Mendelik, who expanded the borders. And yet, unofficially, uh, just all the policies of the government uh, continued through Haile Selassie. Uh, Muslims could not join the army. It was much more difficult uh, to get good education and so forth. Um, and so it, it really continued all the way to some degree or another in, in, until 91. And even after that, there's, there's kind of a continued attitude uh, among many Christians that Muslims don't deserve <laughs> to have any uh, political say. They certainly don't deserve to, to set up an Islamic state or, or be elected as prime minister or something like that. Uh, it's this historical Christian hegemony and legacy is, is still there. Um, so that, yeah, that's what I mean. Um, the negus and, and, and his conversion. You know, those, those, uh, the story about that, the uh, first Hijra, uh, is only found in the Muslim sources. The, um, the old Abyssinian chronicles are, are, are sketchy for, for that period, and um, there's no mention about this. Uh, so, um, of course, it's led some historians to, to question uh, the whole the whole story. Uh, probably most historians still accept the actual first Hijra, but um, are much more skeptical about uh, the conversion uh, because there's simply no evidence that it continued. Uh, as far as we know, Abyssinia was a Christian state and was never anything else. Muslim scholars have argued that the conversion was real, but uh, but 